Welcome, guys, to the continuation of the Great Ace Attorney Adventures. Or more to the point, it's special content, as we have ourselves some escapades to enjoy, as per other Ace Attorney games we've played with DLC. Because of the fact that I didn't know exactly if they would provide spoilers or not, or need to be played at a certain place, I thought the best policy would be to wait till we've completed the main story before heading into our special content section and seeing what's within. Because of course we have like accolades, there's trophies you can get and do stuff for completing episodes of stuff. There's galleries where you can see portraits and cutscenes, etc. of characters here, there and everywhere. There's lots of special content added in to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles as a whole. Including like special costumes if you really <laughs> want to put them on. There's Iris' homemade suit for Luyanosuke. For herself. And Shoms' Japanese Jumble Mix. But they only work for Great Ace Attorney 2, which we will be undertaking not too long in the future. But we're here to play some short extra episodes, the escapades. So without further ado, let us step into our section and start them off. Maybe we'll do like two episodes an episode in certain senses. So we begin with episode one in the defendant's antechamber. In the first of eight escapades, Ryanosuke finds two troll-making witnesses from his earlier trial having a battle of words in the defendant's antechamber, leading to a real tongue lashing. You're about to play it. Let's go. This contains spoilers for the first story, so it does tell you at least. So on the 22nd of November, 3.08 p.m. Supreme Court of Judicature. Defendants. Antechamber. Five. Let's look at my priceless treasure now. Myself, I have scrubbed and scrubbed, but the repellent odor of meat will never be repelled from its resplendent service again. But you have it back in your possession at least. You should be grateful, old man. How dare you! Um, excuse me, but I'd just like to get at that Zabaton cushion there if I could. Uh, ah. Uh. Rest assured, you miserable military malefactor, this is not over! Incarceration awaits those who would have fraud a senior citizen for his priceless treasures! Watch your tongue, old man. Mark my words, I won't. Sorry, Sergeant, but could I just get at that Zabaton cushion there as well? Hmm. Oh. I won't go to jail. Never! Imagine if I did! The very next day. My boy would starve without the chain of command in place to provide for him. Oomph! Using the child to protect yourself? Myself, I call that absolute cowardice! Oh, really? And who just employed the old poor defensive senior citizen's tactic, hmm? The only way to fight an enemy who's using underhand tactics is with a tit for tat strategy. Um, sorry to interrupt again, but I just need to get at that western style cushion there on the sofa. Enough of this insubordination! What do you want, man? Oh, please, don't mind me. Aha! Do my eyes deceive me, or is this the wide-eyed criminal from the trial before? Wide-eyed, perhaps, but criminal, no. What is this unhealthy fascination you exhibit with this seating arrangement of others? Hmm. Why were you peering under the cushion of this upholstered seat? Oh, well, the thing is... Any luck? Did you find it? No, sadly not. I don't think it's here, Kazuma. You really are a liability, Ryunosuke. Report! At once! Have you lost something? Is that it? Yes, we were just on our way to a party to celebrate my friend's victory here when... I realized that my university pin badge was missing. A university pin badge, you say? Yes, for my collar here, you see? Affirmative. Uniforms must be kept in prime condition at all times. A missing badge is unacceptable. I thought if I looked around, it would probably turn up somewhere. Like the old tale of the Koban coin and the stake. A parable of which I am acutely aware. But I've exhausted my search now, really. The only logical conclusion is that someone must have stolen it. Don't look at me! I don't just find any metal or old metal objects irresistible, you know? Imagine what would happen if little Trubaido here swallowed something like that. I'm afraid we'll have to give up, Rinosuke. Still, if you tell the office your student number, they should be able to issue of a new one. What's the matter? Don't tell me... Yes, I don't remember my student number. I don't believe it. I mean, this is the second time you've lost your badge, isn't it? 
third, actually. If you didn't think you could remember it, you should have made a note of it somewhere. I told you that until I was blue in the face the last time this happened. Ah, uh, yes, I do seem to remember someone telling me something along those lines. It was you, was it? You can't even remember who told you that you needed to remember it. Well, student numbers are six digits, Kazuma. Who could remember six whole digits? Kimei isn't exactly a long-established university, you know. All of our numbers are still rather low. In fact, they only use the last three digits. Well, that might help, I suppose. That might help. Rinosuke, it's only three digits you needed to remember. Just three! Sorry, my brain is such a disappointment. Yes, well, anyway, young man. Myself, I was greatly impressed with you in the courtroom today. Oh, you mean me? A lawyer already before you even graduated, and such a loyal friend to this one. This one? What's that supposed to mean? Oh no, I still have much to learn. In fact, that was brought home to me in no uncertain terms only last year. My Achilles heel was spectacularly exposed by my best friend here. Indeed! What, by me? This is the first I've heard about it. Yes, by Rinosuke Naruhodo. You can't have forgotten, surely. It was last summer, at the speech contest. The speech contest? Oh, that! Contestants had to take to the stage and deliver a public address on any subject they chose. We were competing to give the most compelling and powerful speech. And yours was great, it made a huge impression on the audience. Obviously, since I was a budding student of law, I was determined to win. And sure enough, one by one, my opposition fell. When I reached the final at last, I came up against you. Yes, so you did. Not being rude, but when I first laid eyes on you, I thought to myself... This cheeky, wide-eyed no-hoper is out of his depth. He's gonna be a pushover. That's your version of not being rude, is it? Well, I pay for my complacency because it brought on that humiliating defeat. Defeat? How were your ranks compromised? My speech was going very well. I had the audience in the palm of my hand. They hung on my every word. And then, when I came to the very last line... Yes, what happened to the very last line? It was supposed to be a climactic end. Unfortunately, I completely fouled it up. Never! You mean, you stumbled on your words? Spectacularly. Even now, I can't believe I've ruined it. Well, what on earth did you say, man? Rinosuke, you better say it. I still can't get my tongue around it. Sure, of course. I can still recall it perfectly. What you said at the end of your speech, or rather, what you intended to say at the end of your speech, was this. So rise, ladies and gentlemen, and applaud our forefathers' plight and the fight for filial piety. And um, what went wrong? Um, what indeed? Myself, I see no problem with the pronunciation of these paltry words. In that case, old man, I invite you to say it yourself. Very well then, I shall. Ahem, ahem. So arise, ladies and gentlemen, and applaud our forefathers' plight and the flight. The fight for filial lilial plial. It's impossible! I mean, I said it too! The arise, ladies and gentlemen part I delivered perfectly. But the next part had me floundering for a whole five minutes. By the end of it, I was on my knees in front of the podium, a blabbering mess. And that's when the audience started to heckle you. <laughs> arise, arise, they were shouting. Hell on earth! Then, of course, this man went and delivered his word-perfect speech with a perfect ending. How did it go again? Um, let me see. So, my dear fellows, the message is simple. Treat your father and mother with respect. Something like that? I mean, talk about stating the obvious. But the fact is, I lost that speech. Hmm, tongue-tied is the only way to describe it. 
Well, it is quite tricky to say, I agree. That final fight for filial piety, especially. Piety? Piety? I'm probably saying that one wrong, at least. And ever since that day, I've had this question whirling around in my head. Why did our forefathers choose such an awkward phrase? Was it to mock their children? Children, indeed. I mean, it should never have been called filial piety in the first place. Ah! I have a feeling this is wordplay that does not translate necessarily too much from Japanese. But I don't know. At least you're going to Great Britain soon. It might not come up much there. Well, anyway, having lost that accursed contest, I came after you to ask you a question. How is it that you never trip up on your words? I inquired. And you just gave me a broad smile and said, Speaking fast is my hobby. I mean, really? What kind of hobby is that? I don't know. What kind of hobby is that? Do you think you could take your hand off of your sword? Besides, it's just a way to pass the time. After that, you started talking at me ten to the dozen like you were possessed almost. Honestly, you can't imagine the shock I suffered that day. You really can't. You're right. I really can't. Speaking fast is just the sort of hobby I'd expect a civilian like you to waste his time on. Well, you have to practice, of course, but there are some simple things to start with. Like this famous one, for example. Swift samurai swords swipe silently sideways. I'm so good. Ah, oh, yes, even a decrepit tongue in an ailing frame such as mine can find its way around that one. I've no doubt. It's just a bit of fun, really. I can't imagine anyone would struggle to say it. Isn't that right, Kazuma? Swift Swamurai Sword. <laughs> ah! A blabbering mess by word two. It's not just a samurai. Every good soldier needs to be able to handle a sword. That's why I've been busy teaching Ido the finer points of swordplay. None of this wordplay nonsense private. Come to think of it, not long after that, we started to attend lectures together, didn't we? And we got into that debate about family values at the Sukiyaki place on campus. Do you remember? Yes, your argument was full of jokes and puns and wordplay, as usual. I remember it well. Oh, was it? In any case... I swore that I would never let myself forget the shock you gave me back then. And as a symbol of how seriously I took that oath, I decided to wear this. My red Hachimaki headband. Um, sorry, Kazuma. Yes? You've lost me there, I'm afraid. I don't see the link. What does your red headband have to do with your oath? Because it will always remind me of that smug look on your face as you uttered those tantalizing words. What words? You mean another tongue twister? I practiced and practiced until my tongue bled, but in the end, I mastered it. Mastered what? Well, I think it's time you heard this, actually. Kick this in carefully now. I wonder if I could do it. Here goes. Red headband, lead headband, dead headband. There! Word perfect, see? And not only am I just not, you know, I'm saying it fast while it's appearing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd actually been meaning to ask you about that. <laughs> about the story behind your headband, I mean. Well, now you know. So that I'll never forget the shock and humiliation of that day. That's why I wear this red headband every single day without fail. Well, I don't know exactly how much of a shock you think you had back then, but it can be more than the shock you've just given me now. What do you mean? Well, I'm sorry to have to tell you, but the tongue twister I said didn't go the way you seem to have remembered it. Huh? It's just as famous as Swift Samurai Swords, so I can't believe you don't know it really. It goes red bread pan, lead bread pan, dead bread man. Wait, what? Bread, <laughs> bed red pad. It seems I've knocked some wind out of that headband of yours. It's not too late, Private. You could always start wearing a red bread pad on your head instead. Your youthful vigor is manifest, young man. Your cheeks are glowing redder than your hachimaki. 
Why do so many words have to be so similar? So, looking forward to Great Britain then? Where you'll have to deliver speeches in court in English. I suppose. I can always shell seashells on the seashore. <laughs> shell seashells on the seashore? Yes. Okay then. <laughs> So, by the look of it, we end our first episode built around tongue twisters. Which I feel that I delivered immaculately for your ears. So, as we're undertaking two episodes, let's step onwards to inner first class cabin. In this second escapade, it transpires that another crime was committed aboard the SS Berlia. The stakes are high as Sholmes and Stroganoff pursue the culprit, but there's more to the crime than meets the eye. Even tells you which game story it does spoilers for. So on the 6th of January at 6.23pm, the SS Berlia, first class cabin, number one. It's almost two weeks now since we left Japan. I can't believe how quickly time has gone. So our next port of call will be Shanghai. Who's there? Who could it be at this hour? A detective. A detective? Who? A great detective. I don't get it. What's a great detective? If you would just be so kind as to open the door. Oh yes, sorry, of course. Is something wrong, detective? Are you investigating a case? Wherever a great detective goes, great cases occur. Indeed, I am the root of all evil. S sorry Then I don't think I want you in my cabin. Under our very noses on this steamship, a terrible theft has just occurred. What? You noticed, I presume, the brief power failure a short while ago? Oh yes, the power couldn't have been out for more than ten minutes, though. Indeed, yet that was ample time for this wicked crime to be perpetrated. I see. Well, clearly it's a case that needs investigating. Precisely. The culprit ran away in this direction. Down the first class cabin passageway here. Really? The thief came this way? I'm quite sure of it. It may have escaped the attention of the dim-witted crew, but not of the great detective. To that end, I would be obliged if you would allow me to investigate here in this cabin. Um, well... How curious. Is there some reason why it would inconvenience you to have your cabin searched? Inconvenience me? Well, I'd be lying if I said no. After all... There's a stowaway in that wardrobe right over there. It's just me in here, you see. No one else. So you might perhaps want to focus your attention on one of the other first-class cabins. As it happens... You are the only first-class passenger at present. The other cabins are vacant. Oh! Did that rather tragic rumbling of the stomach arise from within you, my good fellow? Of course. As I said, I'm the only person in here. It's not long until dinner time now, so perhaps we could do this afterwards? I do apologize, sir, but it is of the first importance that the investigation is not delayed. Now, if you'll excuse me... Wait, where did he go? How did he suddenly move all the way over there? Yes, without a doubt. If the culprit would be hiding in this cabin, it would have to be inside this wardrobe. I shall need to examine this wardrobe thoroughly. I presume you have no objection. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to decline. Really, you won't find any... Achoo! Achoo! Did those two rather tragic sneezes arise from your good self? Uh, of course they did. As I said, I'm the only person in here. You have a curious knack of talking while sneezing then. Twice, no less. This is going to be a tough one to argue. I was watching you quite intently, sir. And I assure you, I saw no signs of a sneeze. Ah, could we not have held his nose? I've sneezed from my butt. As I was saying, I shall need to examine this wardrobe. We've had it now then. The game's up.
Hmm, nobody hiding in there, it seems. What? What? You seem surprised. No, not, not at all, not at all. No, yes I am. He was in there for sure. I shut the doors on him myself. More visitors. Who's this now? Excusing me. Oh, Seaman Stroganov. Sorry for disturbing, but a crime has been committed on board ship. Yes, I heard. A terrible theft, apparently. How do you know this? Ah, well, the detective here just informed me, you see. Detective. Yes, I assumed you must have asked him to investigate. Detective, could you... What? Where did he go? I must ask you to cooperate with investigation into this crime. Fully. Oh, he's glaring at the wardrobe already. Ah! <laughs> oh, well done, you found me! What are you doing hiding in my wardrobe? My good man, I was merely assessing the practicality of concealment in such a place. And I would say that at a push, a human could survive for up to five minutes in that cramped space. Rinosuke's been there for a fortnight. Is he not human? Who are you? Shh! This is a moment of truth. The great detective is about to unveil the sordid details of this wretched crime. You... you mean to say... Yes, there can be no doubt that the culprit of this terrible theft did indeed conceal himself within this wardrobe. What? But, but that's impossible. He couldn't have done. Because my best friend was in there the entire time. Or at least I thought he was. How can you be so sure of this? Elementary, my dear fellow. The criminal left behind the most revealing evidence. How else could you explain? These free bones. Ah! What the? He's right. Look at those gnawed bones in there. And three of them. Ah, the criminal has escaped this time, but I will find him and crush him! Um, can I ask you something, detective? Why, yes, of course. I am always delighted to answer an inquiring mind. In this terrible theft, what exactly was stolen? Aha! What else? But some steaks on the rib bone! Huh. Did, did you say steaks on the rib bone? For this evening's dinner, three rib steaks were stolen from ship's kitchen only a short time ago. There was malfunction with generator, and ship was without light for 10 minutes. Chef who saw criminal said that he ran away down first class passageway. And now I am on his tail. I'm afraid to say, dear fellow, that your man is no longer in this cabin. But how? Through the cabin door, no less. Having devoured his hall in his wardrobe, the culprit discarded the bones and concealed himself behind the cabin door as you came inside. Then, when attention was turned to the wardrobe, he seized his chance to escape through the open door. What? Make haste, my good man. After the culprit, I shall follow presently. Hold it! Something troubles you, sir. I think maybe criminal is not running away at all. What are you suggesting? And now I know where the dog is buried, Mr. Asogi. <laughs> Me? Da! When I think that you are culprit, everything is falling in place! The criminal that disappeared in first class passageway, the bones in the wardrobe, all crews are pointing their fingers at you! D don't be ridiculous, I would never... Yes, yes, of course, I established at once that you couldn't be the perpetrator of this crime. You did! Why? How are you so sure? My dear fellow! There are but two things in this world on which one can rely with total certainty. What two things? The first is the word of a great detective, and the second... The second is the tragic rumbling of an empty belly. Ah, not again! When I first entered this cabin, there did arise from this gentleman a belly rumbling so odiously tragic that it confirmed beyond all doubt. But the man had not eaten a single rib steak in some time, let alone free. 
Why do I have to suffer this humiliation when I've done nothing wrong? Curses! I will catch this thief. He cannot have gone far. Indeed, assuming he's decided against the post-mill constitutional swim. Well, if you will excuse me now, my apologies for upsetting your evening. Detective, one moment, please. Yes. That was a most remarkable deduction. Perhaps you'd be kind enough to tell me your name. Ah, it quite slipped my mind. You have been talking with the one and only. Herlock Sholmes! I see. Well, I'm Kazuma Asogi. I'm a student on my way to Great Britain. Pleased to make your acquaintance, Mr. Asogi. Oh, and before I forget... Yes? I feel I should warn you. Live cargo is strictly forbidden on this vessel. So you would do well to conceal the stowaway currently lying low under your bed as carefully as possible. Oh, under the bed. I bid you farewell then. Mr. Asogi. He's uncovered our secret. I suppose I should have expected nothing less of a great detective. Now then. When did you move in under the bed? I thought we'd had it when he opened the wardrobe door. Ah, well, it was thanks to that split second chance you engineered. That I what? You distracted him for a moment, remember? When you suggested that he investigate the other cabins instead? Ah, oh, yes, he turned to look towards the corridor, didn't he? Well, I couldn't see what he was doing, of course. But I thought to myself, it's now or never. And the next thing I knew, I was under the bed. You really know how to give me a scare, don't you? Anyway, what's all this about the rib steaks, eh? Ugh, sorry about that. I've... I've just been so hungry. Ever since we left Japan stuck in that tiny wardrobe... Well, you should know, you've been splitting all your meals with me. You must be starving too, surely? Right on cue. And there was that power cut before, wasn't there? For about ten minutes. So it was then. I caught a whiff of the most delicious smell. And I thought to myself, it's now or never. The next thing I knew, I had the steak in my hands. This man just can't help getting himself into trouble. Well, all right, you were hungry. But free steaks. Thanks to you, free crewmen are going to go without tonight, I imagine. No, it was just the one. What? I only took one rib steak from the kitchen. That's all. But I don't understand. Hey, I'm not that selfish. If I'd stolen free steaks, I'd at least have tossed one your way. I'm not your pet dog. Well, in that case, who stole the other two? Ah, uh, do you think... C could there be a g g ghost on board? A m m m meat loving g g g ghost There can only have been a single bone in the wardrobe when Rionosuke moved to hide under the bed. Which means that the other two bones can only have been put there by one very flesh and blood person. <laughs> but, what's so funny? We're on a <laughs> haunted g g g ghost ship. A great detective, or a great mischief maker. Either way, I think I'd like to spend a little more time getting to know that man. The Great Hairlock Sholmes. And so our second episode comes to an end. What seems to be skits, more or less. Nothing interactive, therefore. Just a little bit of extra, maybe even background characterization. As well as, obviously, played for a little bit of comedy. So, with two episodes viewed, we move on to our third episode next time on The Great Ace Attorney Adventures. Join me then as our post-game continues and we get well on the way to moving on to our second adventure. I'll see you guys then, next time, for more. Bye-bye.